Hi everyone, I hope you guys are keeping well. If you've been diagnosed with disc bulges or you've suffering from sciatica pain or you've heard that you have anal tear, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a workout routine if you are suffering from low back pain, more specifically disc bulges or sciatica or if you've been diagnosed with anal tear. These exercises will reduce your pain build up your core strength and also help you to minimize your recurrence of back pain. At the same time, it helps you to improve your mobility and gain confidence. If you've never been in this channel, my name is Bob, I'm a physical therapist, and the purpose of this channel is to help people like yourself with simple tips and exercise for quicker recovery. Make sure to subscribe my channel right now and press that like button by the time you finish this video. If you've been following my channel, last week I've uploaded a beginner routine of this workout for L4, L5, L5, S1, disc bulges and sciatica pain and in this video I'm going to progress this workout routine to an intermediate routine. In this routine we're going to progress those exercises step by step and give you a chance to basically progress your routine. That means if you haven't started the beginner routine eventually I would suggest you to go back to my channel and basically start with that beginner routine and when you follow that routine for three to four weeks you can basically progress to this intermediate routine. On the other hand, if you've never been in this channel and this is the first time that you're basically watching my video and you're looking for a rehab routine for your L4, L5, L5, S1 disc bulges or if you're suffering from sciatica pain or you've been diagnosed with an tear, I have a series of exercises and rehab routine in my channel that you can basically start your rehabilitation and these exercises and rehab routine can help you to reduce your pain, improve your mobility and help you to get back to your daily activity. I would definitely leave the link underneath of this video for you to basically start with those exercises and you can eventually progress to this routine. Now, this routine is suitable for anyone who experiencing back pain, more specifically L4, L5, L5, S1 disc bulges or experiencing sciatica pain or have been diagnosed with anal tear. In this routine, I'm gonna show you a warm-up exercise that you're gonna do before starting the exercises, which means that helps you to warm up your lower back and your upper body and give you a chance to basically do something a little more intense. After finishing the exercises that I'm gonna show you in this video, we're gonna finish it with a cool down that I would suggest you to follow as I show in this routine. Let's get started. All right guys, I'm gonna show you a warm up routine that we're gonna start before we go into the exercises. I'm gonna show you the exercise one by one and you can give it a try. We're gonna start with cat camel, which is a simple exercise for your upper and your lower back to get basically a little bit movement there. I'm gonna copy my movement. Your hands are gonna be underneath of your shoulder and your knees are underneath of your hip. Bring the head down and apply a bit of stretch on your upper back. Relax. You're gonna practice this movement for three sets of five to eight to just give yourself a bit of mobility. Cat camel is a great exercise if you're suffering from lower back pain, more specifically L4, L5, L5 is one of these bulges or sciatica pain. This can actually help you to improve your mobility. From cat camel, we're gonna go through the hip flexor stretch, which is a kneeling position. If you basically get to the kneeling position, one foot front and one foot back, you wanna apply a slight shuffle movement and get that hip moving. You don't wanna hold it there for so long. A couple of seconds, one, two, and three and you move back. You wanna create that dynamic, basically, movement. You wanna create that, uh, basically, gentle movement around your hip and your um, hamstring movements, which can help you to warm up those muscles. You change legs, move forward, hold it there for a second. Breathe in and out. This kneeling hip flexor stretch can open up your hip muscles stretch your hamstrings, stretch your hip flexors, and kind of like is a hip opener. You can practice this for two to three rounds for three to four, five reps. Now, from there, we're gonna go for basically thoracic rotation, which I would suggest you to bring your opposite knee, which means the left knee, and we're gonna go for rotation movement. This movement for your thoracic spine, 
you want to come maintain this knee stable and move these arms you can practice this for three to five round breathing and out while you're doing it now you do the same thing from the other side keep this knee stable breathe in and breathe out breathe in and breathe out breathe in and breathe out now in this routine i show you an example of warm-up you can spend more than what i show you here as long as you feel free and you have time all right guys we're going to start this exercise routine with rdls or romanian deadlift which i'm going to show you in an easy version and slowly progress them the eventual movements initially going to start with a hip hinge which means you're going to stand feet shoulder width apart and you basically want to lean forward and create that hip, hip hinge and coming back which means in the initial uh, video i show you how to practice hip hinge with holding one hand on, on your tummy and one hand on the lower back and create that hip hinge movements now we're going to progress this movement and go a little bit move forward which means if you're comfortable with the movement you're going to bring the hands towards the shin and coming back up without bending the lower back and coming back up now we're going to lean forward and coming back up this movement kind of like activate your hamstring muscle and your glute muscle which means by this range you can feel the stretch on your hamstrings now if you feel comfortable with it you can add on a bit of weight into it depends on whatever weight that you have at home if you have dumbbells if you have a ball whatever you have it can be a really good progress to add on to it which means you do the same movement hold on the weight lean forward keep the back nice and tall and push through the hip and lean forward and back to the movement i'm going to show you from the, this angle keep feet shoulder width apart keep the back nice and tall chest back lean forward and back as you can see i'm not pulling it with my arms i basically lean forward and pull them through my hip that hip hinge is essential practice this exercise for three sets of five to eight without weight and whenever you feel comfortable progressing with weight all right guys we're going to move on to side kick or clamshell exercise which is a similar movement but i'm going to show you the easier version and then i'm going to show you a progression for the clamshell movement what you need you basically can use any type of loop resistant band that you have and wrap it around above the knee you're going to side line on the basically in the elbow and you're trying to create that clamshell movement. So your foot are together, you open up this basic knee, you stabilize the below knee, and with this exercise, you're activating your gluteus medius muscle or external rotators. Now, this exercise, it's really beneficial if you're suffering from low back pain, more specifically, L4, L5, L5, S1 dysbulges, or sciatica pain. Now, that would be the initial exercise and if you find that clamshell is easy you can do the same thing in a standing position which means you try to stabilize your body somewhere and we're going to go for that side kick movement which means this is a little bit more range from the initial clamshell and you basically activating your both glutes at the same time so this hip has to stabilize your body and the other one has to basically create the movement you try them on both sides we're gonna practice this eventually from three sets of five to eight and progress them through sets of, let's say 10 to 12. Now, if you find standing like that is a little bit difficult, you can stabilize your body with the wall. Make sure to get the full range and feel the basically glute that works. Clamshell or side kicks are great exercise. If you're suffering from L4, L5, L5 swan disc bulges, or sciatica pain. This exercise can strengthen your hip and your glute muscle, which are beneficial for you to stabilize your overall core and your overall strength. The next move is gonna be a core strengthening exercise, which is called Bear Dog. Bear Dog is a great exercise if you're suffering from chronic low back pain, more specifically L4, L5, L5, S1 dysbulges, or sciatica pain. What study and research has shown, if you're suffering in a chronic way from your lower back, 
core strength exercises can be beneficial. I'm gonna show you how to do the bird dog and how you can progress them. Eventually, you're gonna be in a quadruped position, which means your hands underneath of your shoulder and your knees underneath of your hip. And we are trying to basically move opposite hands and opposite leg. And while you're doing that movement, I'm stabilizing my core and avoiding any shuffle movement on my lower back and entire body. I would suggest to practice in one side, maybe three, slow and controlled. Eventually, we wanna come back all the way to the ground, stabilize your body and move them back again. And whenever you felt comfortable, you can avoid touching your knee to the ground and carry on. I'm gonna show you the same thing from the other side. That's very good, control. Try to avoid movement on your lower back. Yeah, start with three to four rounds of three to five repetition and you can slowly progress them. This exercise can be really beneficial for your core strength and you, if you're suffering from disc bulges or sciatica pain can be a really good help for you. All right guys, we're gonna progress this routine with a bit of glute work with resistant band. I'm gonna show you this exercise and you can give it a try. This exercise is hip bridge or glute bridges. With using the, basically this resistant band, you're activating more of your glute muscle. Now, I'm gonna show you the movement and you can give it a try. You're gonna wrap the basic resistant band above your knee. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to keep the knee slightly wider than the shoulder and maintain that during the movement, which means you're gonna lie on your back, hands on the ground, and you're trying to apply that pressure out and shift your hip off the ground. Now, when you're doing this movement, you're trying to minimize that movement of your knee inward. Push it out, hold it there for a second at the top. And I try it for three sets of eight to 10 and slowly progress it to 15. Now, if you find it it's easy, you can go up and push the knees out. That can be another version, up, knees out. Slow control down, up, push out. Up, and push out. If you're doing this exercise right, you can feel your glute muscle, specifically the external rotators, can be definitely feel the movement and specifically when you're pushing the knees out, you're activating more of those muscles. If you're suffering from disc bulges or sciatica, this is a beneficial exercise for you that can help you to minimize your pain, improve your strength, and also engaging your core in this movement can improve your core strength. All right, guys, we're gonna move on to exercise called Superman, which is a great exercise if you're suffering from disc bulges or sciatica pain. This exercise can strengthen your overall upper and lower back, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. In this exercise, you're gonna lie down on your abdominal, and it's a progression of the back extension that I showed you eventually in an initial video. In this exercise, you're trying to basically bring the opposite hands and leg up, which means hold it there for a few seconds, five, four, three, two, and relax. You're gonna change arms and leg. Five, four, three, two, and relax. Back up again, change side. Five, four, three, two, and relax. Let's go change legs and arms. Five, four, three, two, and relax. Now, as you can see, this movement not only activate your upper back and basically diagonal movement of your back and lower back muscle, at the same time with lifting the opposite leg, you're engaging your glute muscle and your hamstring muscle, which is kind of combined to strengthen your lower back and upper back. This exercise can be a really good exercise for you to strengthen your overall upper back and your core strength. And I would suggest you start with three sets of, let's say eight and slowly build it up to 10. You want to practice it in both sides. Don't do it very quick, step by step and slowly progress it. If you're going to finish this exercise routine with an upper body and a core strengthening exercise, 
which I'm gonna show you. It's a simplified version of the push-up, but I'm gonna show you how to do it and how you can actually progress it. In majority of the cases, many of my clients and patients can't do push-up, and for that matter, I'm gonna show you an easier version, a kneeling position of push-up, that you basically on a kneeling position and hands slightly far away from your body, but shoulder width apart, you wanna maintain your back straight, you try to avoid the back to move down, keep the back nice and tall, engage the core, and you wanna lean forward, and before you touch the ground, you wanna push back up. Now, to do that, you need to engage your core and try to not just hold on everything on your upper body strength, which means your core has to be strength and, and engaged, and like literally help your body to, just like with the combination of your core strength and your upper body movement, you're creating that movement. Now, in this case, push-up still can be a little bit challenging and for that purpose, I've created a separate video for you to be able to start an easier version of push-up and slowly build up even to a basic kneeling position. If you find this is difficult, I'm gonna leave a link underneath of this video for you that you can actually start your push-up in an easier version and slowly build it up. Many of you ask, can I do push-up if I'm suffering from L4, L5, L5, S1, disc bulges, or sciatica pain? And I mentioned yes, you can definitely try push-up. It's a great exercise that can strengthen your core and also your upper body. Give it a try and let me know how you're getting on. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you a cool down routine of this basic exercise that I showed you, and I would like to basically finish it with this cool down. In this cool down, they are going to basically loosen up the muscle that you worked and also kind of like moderate your nervous system and neutralize it. The first exercise is gonna be a standing hamstring stretch. In this exercise, we're trying to stretch the hamstring, but at the same time, we're gonna create a slice of that basically nerve glide movement that can be beneficial if you're suffering from L4, L5, L5 spine dysbologies or sciatica. What we're gonna do, we're gonna create small steps, which means you're trying to create small steps and look forward, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna create, maintain this knee straight, and I'm going to lean forward slightly, and come back up. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm going to basically bring my necks up and then bring necks down. Necks up and neck down. Neck up and neck down. Neck up and neck down. Make sure to follow my instruction, which means you move the neck when you're going down, up, and that creates some stretch on the hamstring. At the same time, when you're coming back, you're looking down. Up and down. Change legs. Same thing. Up. Slow down. And slow down. Good. Try for three round of, let's say, two to three repetition. Now, every single person has a different range. Don't challenge it. Don't go too far that you feel uncomfortable in your lower back. Go to the point that you feel comfortable. Now, if you find this actually doesn't help you to get to that range, or you find it uncomfortable, do the lying position, which means you're gonna lie on your back, literally hold on one leg, and basically create that. Bring it down and up down and up good job do the same thing the other side down and back up down and back up now from this movement we're gonna go to back extension which is one of my favorite cool down stretches you can hold hands next to your body in a push-up position, and you're gonna bring the back off the ground, hold it there for five seconds, breathe in and out, and breathe out. Back extension or McKenzie exercise. It's a great move if you're suffering from L4, L5, L5 is one dysphagia or sciatica pain. This can help you with pain and also can reduce your basically discomfort in terms of your low back pain, you want to maintain your hip on the ground. You don't want to go too far back, which means you don't want to go up to here, up to here, control it, and slow down. 
try the back extension for three round of basically five to eight second hold slowly progress it to four to five rounds now the last stretch that i'm going to show you in this exercise routine is going to be hip stretch which is basically now we're going to progress it to from single leg that i showed you last week you're going to bring one leg up hold it there for 10 15 seconds and whenever you felt it's comfortable you can bring the other side as well which means you can hold them both together and try to relax the lower back relax the shoulder focus on your breathing <sighs> breathe out you may need to hold the towel here if you find you can't really hold your hands there with the towel you can basically wrap it around your knee and hold it there you want to hold it there for 15 to 20 seconds for three to four rounds give it a try and don't hesitate to spend more time for your cool down and warm up i hope you guys find this video helpful before we're finishing this video i would like to share with you three important tips that can help you to maximize your results you've been asking me many questions in my channel and i'm going to answer three of your top questions that it can be beneficial for you the first tips that i would like to share with you is that you've been asking me if i'm suffering from l4 l5 l5 s1 disc bulges do i need to go and do the surgery eventually surgery is an option but would be the last option that any physio or physical therapist would offer their patient which means we would like to start your routine with a conservative exercises that i'm showing you in this channel and if these in the long run doesn't help you to improve your pain and your mobility and your daily activity and your life then you might think about surgery which means surgery is an option but a last option that anybody wants to go and at the end of the day it might not necessarily be the best option even if you go for a surgery which means the results of the surgery not always optimal in some cases people still have pain after the surgery the second tips that I would like to share with you guys is can I go for walk or run or can I go for swim or cycle if I'm experiencing lower back pain you can definitely follow these activities if you're suffering from back pain more specifically if you're suffering from sciatica pain or L4, L5, L5, S1 disc bulges but a study has shown that if you basically stay active and doing certain type of aerobic exercises that can be very beneficial for your pain and your mobility the last tip that i would like to share with you guys here is the one of the questions that many of you guys ask me what else can i do beside exercise and rehab exercises that you show me in this channel to improve my back and fasten my results there are a couple of things that you can do in your daily activity which i'm going to ask you for one important factor if you can improve your sleep and get a very good well rest evening you can definitely help your body to recover quicker what a study and research has shown that sleep is can be a very important factor for people who suffer from chronic pain which means if you can accommodate your sleep to get at least between seven to eight hours every day that would be a really help for your body to recover and get better quicker i hope you guys find this information and this video helpful if you're suffering from l4 l5 l5 s1 disc bulges or sciatica pain this video can be a great help for you to improve your rehab exercises to a workout routine and progress your routine and get stronger this exercise can help you to improve your core strength improve your mobility and actually help you to stay active and gain confidence make sure to subscribe my channel for my weekly update right now and press the like button until next week all the best